am I going to trust? I'm literally putting my life choices in someone's hands. Is it going to be mine, full of my best ideas, or is it going to be to live into the calling that God's put on my life, to be this child's mother? And I'm going to do it in a way that is absolutely made clear through God's word, through the person of the Holy Spirit who helps reaffirm that word and the wisdom of others that are living into that word as well. Am I going to literally put my path of life in God's hands, which requires absolute trust? I'm trusting God because my little child's life is at stake. When it comes to our marriages, we're putting our lives and our trust in God. Yes? We're saying, hey, this life that I have, I'm putting it in God's path, which is why Jesus said, hey, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. And you'll see the Father if you come through me. You won't if you try to get it another way. It is a literal life path. And we say, I'm trusting my life into the hands of God. It is absolutely trust because it's something we cannot foresee and we're not going to experience it probably tomorrow. It's going to be years and even decades before we see the final results. To set this child up for, a, for a, 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 the, the clearest example of Christ. So that when they in their own free will want to make their choice. That they will follow a God who has been so good to their mother. To their father. To the family that they're living in. They've seen it their whole life. That's, that's what we are meant to do. That's what we're called in to do. And I, I think about students who want to make choices in their life. They're like, God, my life path. I want to live a life that's fulfilling. There's so many opportunities. There's so many things in front of me. But then I'm hearing the economy's terrible. And I think, oh, well, this isn't going to happen. And I'm going to create this debt. And there's all kinds of uncertainty. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Lots of students are asking this question right now. But we're putting ourselves into the hands of God and saying, God, I'm going to honor you with my life. I'm going to find a, a, an opportunity, a career. You're going to show me those things. I believe that you'll do that as I honor you in my life. And I'm going to believe that you're going to guide me. You're going to show me. I'm putting my life in your hands. I trust you. You will show me these things. And we're doing this all day long with all kinds of relationships in our life. And we got to realize that Gideon had to make a choice. God, I know that I am not enough. What I bring to this battle will never work because none of these guys are ninjas. And neither am I. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you will. I trust you with my life. So let's go. So they go down and they do what they do and God does what he does. And here's what we need to know. You plus your enemy are not enough. You plus God are always enough. You plus God adds up. You at plus God adds up to success, and that's what God has called you and I into. He's called you and I to succeed in our callings. God plus Gideon are more than enough to succeed. All of God, uh, the God-given callings in Gideon's life are made possible, not because Gideon was good enough, not because he was strong enough, but because God made it possible as he puts his life and his trust in God alone. But guys, let's not... Let's not, let's not act like this isn't all about dependence because it's exactly what it is. Anytime you and I are talking about me plus God equaling success, at, uh, equaling adding up to enough to make this thing happen, it's all about dependence. What is Gideon learning? What are the 300 learning? They all knew they weren't enough. The 300 still followed the glow suit guy into battle because they believed God was going to work through him. Why did they do it? Because they believed them plus God was going to be enough. It was all about dependence. Let's talk about what this really looks like. I'll tell you how it works in my life. When you're talking about dependence on God, there's a lot of ways that we talk about dependence. But I'll tell you the one that we all experience, and that would be in relationships. Because what are our days? It's a continual experiencing relationships all around us, right? We're, we're constantly working, talking with people, uh, and uh, walking with people. 
And I know that there are certain times in our lives where people create feelings inside of us, like anger, like resentment, like unforgiveness. These things become present. Bitterness begins to set in. And now we've got this relationship that's completely awkward. And God says, hey, I, I, I want to work with you so that that doesn't have to remain awkward anymore. Well, God, I, I don't know how to do that. In fact, I've already done something, and that's how we got to here. I know. Because, see, you're not enough. But if you'll let me into this situation, I can help you. So here's how it works for me. If I know I've got something along those lines, then I'm going to start praying about that early. God, I'm going to need for your help. Because right now what I want to say is the opposite of self-control. It's the opposite of patience. It's the opposite of kind. It's the opposite of gentleness. And I know all these things are what you're trying to draw out of me as I spend time with you. And so what I'm asking for is when that day comes, when that moment, when that appointment happens, I'm going to need your help. Because what I really want to say is the zinger, so I can walk out of that meeting and then tell somebody else, oh, guess what I got to say? Oh, you're not going to believe what I got to say. Woo, high five, good for you. That's what I want to say. There's literally been times when I say, okay, God, at the leading of the Holy Spirit, I made a list. Things I can't say. I did. I made a list. I make a list. I, this actually probably more often than you know. I'll make a list. Things I can't say, things I can't do. God, I'm praying, please give me the self-control not to say or do any of these things in this conversation that I'm about to have. Here's what I know, God. You want to you reconcile this relationship? And we may not walk around away best friends, but you still want to bring this to a place where it's no longer awkward. It's, it's good. It's real. And I'm no longer a stumbling block for them. And they're no longer a stumbling block for me. Now, I can't make that happen on their side, but I'm going to do everything on my side that I can. And so, God, I need this to happen because if, if you don't show up when I have that meeting, then this thing's going to get more awkward because I know what I bring to the table. And then what I find happening is that as I begin praying for those things, God just starts to override those feelings that I have and those things that I want to say to the point that when I get into that meeting, what I find is, is that all of those intense emotions of anger and bitterness and frustration and resentment begin to dissipate and diffuse. And God does something I don't know, kind of just gives me a loaf of barley bread. I'm like, why well, didn't expect that? What? How did that happen? That's not what I was thinking. Yeah, Craig, that's kind of what I do. I bring the unexpected. That's why the odds never matter when I'm leading you. It's time. It's time to trust me. It's time for you to give me your life and your trust. God leads me to clarity in my life, he gives that to me. And he gives me the ability to take those next steps. And then there's an expectation that when I take those next steps, God will be present with me at the time. That's, what it, that's the way it works. That's what God needs. 